Gersen de Neubassen is a German group whose industrial din is meant to reflect the anger and alienation that young people feel growing up in the concrete jungle. Theirs is a rude, raw, negative kind of poetry that not everybody can relate to. Now, there's another group called Test Department from England who appear on the surface to play the same kind of music, but they insist it's not the same thing at all. Their music is specific, political, and calls for social responsibility. Uh, well, we always go for certain specific items, although, you know, I mean, obviously, everywhere you go, it's all slightly different. But, I mean, there are basic pieces of equipment that you go for each time, uh, like uh, tanks, pipe, and basically straight pieces of angle that you can make up frames with. Are you actually uh, a trained welder? Yeah, well, I'm on a six-month course at the moment in wel welding and fabrication. So, it, I mean, it's perfect, really, because that's training to, to weld and then actually training to actually make up component parts as well. So I'm hoping to actually be able to build instruments to my own design specifications once I've done it. So um, an oxy-settling flame. This item is not an instrument of terror and torture for you. No, no but, uh, it's a pretty vital piece of equipment and just like you can cut through and cut stuff to size really quickly and easily right. with that. Like a cameraman. Yeah. Uh, uh, we need something like those two those two sinks would be I mean they Yes. Mind you, a steel drum? Stainless steel, it's usually, yeah, usually gives a good sound. But it's like, I tend to kind of avoid finished objects, you know, that look obviously like a kitchen sink. It's kind of... Uh, everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, if you want, you know, it's 15, if you want to bargain down to 12, that's the best I can offer. I think that's a fair for uh, coming out of the yard. But I can't go down to 9 cents. Well, was that number you said then? That was... Well, actually, well, if you take... Uh, if you take 10 cents a pound times, uh, nine, is $9. I, I, yeah, so I'm charging you 12. Got a big shot of your knife. Yeah, you're, 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 kind of the yard's going to get TV, you know, in free cool, advertising cool in. Yard in, you know. All right, fine, I could argue. $10? Fine. Right. Right. <laughs> there you go. It's a big seal here. I'll be able to get that operation now. You have a shape in mind about what you're, you're about to be well, testing. Are you going on this? I mean, is it a random process? No, that, there is a plan. <laughs> That's Jack's oh, sketch. The plan. Recently, Rock and Roll has made all kinds of efforts to inform, uh, educate people, and to raise money for a variety of charities and benefits. Uh, the most political one I've heard of was, I think, what was called the Red Wedge in England, with uh, groups like, uh, well, Billy Bragg and uh, Style Council. As I understand it, their effort was to inform people about the evils of the Thatcher government. Uh, you've done similar things to that, have you not? What we tried to do during the miners' strike, when we did a series of miners' benefits, a whole national tour, in fact, was in fact put on an evening that was de dealing specifically with the issues raised by the strike. It wasn't just a case of putting on a, a gig to make money. We were actually wanting to educate people and show people and introduce people with, to the actual people who were involved in the strike themselves, you know, the actual communities involved. We went around the whole of England playing concerts with uh, a, a Welsh male voice choir, Yorkshire brass bands and a pipe band in Scotland, and people coming to see us because it was a minor's benefit and not because, you know, we were some kind of rock, cool rock group or whatever. Because the typical thing about benefits is, is this syndrome of you have a benefit, you go out and get a band or two or three, and you open the doors, you take the money, people drink a few beers, they watch a few bands, which typically they're going along to see anyway. The bands, um, yeah. yeah. the fact that they're actually supporting a cause. There, there's been two or three little surveys that have actually turned up the result that like only 15% of the people who go along to benefits actually go along because they know what the benefit's for. We try to do something to, to change that because as you have these bands, all of a sudden you, you get a speaker get up there and talk for five minutes about about why the benefit's going on and everyone shoots off to the bar, you know, <laughs> so that's what goes on. And we thought, well, it'd be better if we can actually just set up a whole scenario of life like what the miners leave. We had all sorts of films and slides um, so that all night long as soon as the audience came in there was like these pictures just of the miners lot the band stops the doors fly open sing 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 get out I said I'm not getting out I'm protesting I'm going to talk to the photographers he jumps in and grabs him with the drones I never move
playing the um, the angle. Oh right, well, for five years basically, as long as we've been in existence. We come from a part of London that used to be the Docklands, uh, and it's now just a big piece of real estate, just an industrial graveyard basically. So there was plenty of raw materials for us. You know, that's where the idea the idea came from. Our influences are environmental rather than musical. There was loads of just scrap lying around for the taking. So it comes from the initiative of young people just to actually get music together as being like a last resort for a release of frustration and, and then running up against the other problem of the fact that if you actually want to make music you're talking about a lot of money actually buying equipment and just that was an impossibility in the circumstances that the band had. We became interested in the images of, of social realist art very early on and propaganda and how like the masses were convinced of the, of the ideas of the state and as time went on we got more and more interested and we started looking at more recent propaganda and the, the subliminal ways that you know we're fed propaganda every day knowing that all kinds of older and disapproving people say that all this rock music sounds the same all that punk music it's just one song played a different way again and again uh, i would have, can only imagine the kind of criticisms they would level against your music are there in fact subtleties that one is supposed to be hearing yeah people do i mean we were in poland at the end of last year we went over to the east uh, and ended up in a town called Lublin uh, where we played a concert, a benefit concert for Mexico City. It was just around the time of the earthquake. And uh, like the, all the families from this uh, the big bus factory in the town came along with their kids. And uh, I mean, it was an incredible factory. They like, they'd, like make new buses out of old ones. Nothing's thrown away in Poland. But like the day after the gig, when we went back to visit the factory, they were telling us how suddenly all the sounds that they heard every day and that had just been noise before suddenly was sounding like music, you know? So that was like the, the best response we could have asked for, really. Just to rock you. 